Hello, welcome to week one, unit seven, creating complex logical expressions. In the previous units, we have seen how we can use the if statement to test logical expressions and execute program code depending on the result of this evaluation. For example, we have seen that we could use an if statement to implement something like, I will clean the kitchen tomorrow if it rains. If it's not raining, I will do something else. In this unit, we will now have a look at logical operators like AND, OR and NOT and how we can use these logical operators to create complex logical expressions. So in this slide, you see three logic tables for the logical operators AND, OR and NOT and you see when the expressions created by these operators become true. For example, if you have a look at the logical operator AND, a statement created using AND will only be true if both parts of the statement are true. So, I will go swimming if it's not raining and it's warm. And I will only do this if both parts are true. I won't go into too much detail of the logical operators here. If you are interested in more details, uh, I suggest that you will look up Boolean algebra on Wikipedia. There you have a detailed introduction. What we will be doing, we will be looking at how to use this operator in Python code. So therefore it's showtime again. Let's switch over to the notebook and we'll see how to use AND, OR and NOT in Python code. So as mentioned earlier, we can use AND, OR and NOT to create complex expressions. So in order to understand how we can use these operators, let's start with a little program code. This little Python program here tests if a number entered by a user can be divided by three and by five. And how is this done? The important part is line three here. Here I built a complex expression consisting of two parts. First, I test if a number is, can be divided by three. This is done using the modulo operator. If number modulo three equals to zero, we know that the number is dividable by three. And then I create a second statement, namely if the number can be divided by five. Again, I use the modulo operator here. If number modulo 5 equals to 0, we know that the number can be divided by 5. And finally, these two parts are combined using the nth operator. And we know now that the whole logical expression here only becomes true if both parts, namely this part, number can be divided by 3, and the second part, the number can be divided by 5, becomes true. So only if both conditions are true, this part is executed. So let's, so let's test this little program. I need to enter a number. Let's first try the 10. Nothing happens. Obviously 10 is only dividable by five, but not by three. Let's execute the program again and try now, for example, 15. And we see if I enter 15, I get the result 15 can be divided by 3 and 5. And this is the result of the complex expression here in line 3 being evaluated to true. And of course, we can create really complex logical expressions. In the next program example, I created a few variables, a, b, z, d, and e and initialized them with certain values. And after that, I created quite complex expression like the one in line eight and the one in line 11, where I you know, use and, or, and not to create a condition. Let's execute this. And we see, okay, we get some result. Um, 
I don't want to analyze this program in detail. It's just to show you that complex conditions can be created. And this program also shows you already that it quickly becomes really difficult to understand what an expression really means. So if you look at line eight here, it's really hard for a human reader to understand what's actually happening here. So that's just a little caveat. It's possible to create really complex conditions, but it's better to not do so as it tends to make programs really hard to understand. So far, we have seen that you can use logical operators to create complex logical expressions. One more thing is also true. You can again use parentheses to group these logical expressions together, so to change the evaluation order of a logical expression. And this is exactly what's shown here. So I have two expressions. The first one is false and false or true. And the second one is false and parentheses, false or true, and close parentheses. So let's execute this little program. And we see the first statement evaluates to true and the second evaluates to false. So why is this the case? If we analyze the first statement in detail, we could look up in the Python documentation that and is evaluated before the or. So therefore, the first thing that's evaluated is false and false, which results to false. And then we have false or true, and false or true results to true. And that's exactly what we see here. In contrast to that, in the second statement, the one down here, we use parentheses to change the evaluation order. First, false or true is evaluated. False or true results into true. And after that, false and the result of this statement, which is true. So false and true is evaluated. And we can look up in our logical table that false and true results to false. And that's exactly what we see down here. So you see, parentheses can be used to change the order in which logical expressions are evaluated. And they can also be used to make explicit what you try to do with a logical expression that is a little bit more complex. So that's exactly what I've done up here, right? So if you remember the first example, I used parentheses to do exactly this. First, I wanted to make sure that a number can be divided by three. Then I want to make sure that the next check is if the number can be divided by five. And finally, the two results are combined using the AND operator. That's it regarding logical operators. We will see them a lot in the programs we're creating in the upcoming weeks. So therefore, you will get quite quickly used to them. The next thing I want to show you is a little example on how to check input. What you already know is that we can use the input function to read input from the user. And we also know that the return type is always string. If we want to convert the return type into something else, we need to use one of the functions like int or boolean. And that's exactly what I've done here. This little program asks the user for a number and converts the input to an integer using the int function. However, we have already also seen that if I enter something that's not an integer, we get an error. So let's do this again. I execute a small program. Now I enter a string test. And of course, I get an error message that this value which I've entered can't be converted to an integer. However, in order to prevent this error, we can use methods that are provided by string. String has several methods that are called is something. For example, is decimal or is alpha or is space. And this can be used to check if a string has certain properties. For example, if it just contains space characters. And using this information, we can now write a program that makes sure that a user really enters a number. 
And this is exactly what we have down here. First, I use the input function again to get an input from the user. Next, I use the isDigit method to check if the user just enters, entered digits. If this is the case, I know I can convert this string to an integer. Otherwise, yeah, I know I can't convert it and I return an information to the user. So let's give this a try. I execute the program, I enter a five and I get the result, very nice, five is my favorite number. Let's try something else. Let's enter, for example, test. Oh, sorry, that was no number. And the same is true if we, for example, enter 5.0. So the isDecimal method doesn't return true in this case, so the else part of this expression is executed. In the notebook, I provided you with a link to the documentation, though let's increase this a little bit. Um, this is a documentation of the string methods and here in this list you will find, let's see, the is, um, the is decimal method for example. Here we have the documentation of the is decimal method. I won't be going into detail here and, and, and reading the documentation with you. I just want to show you this documentation and you should get used to using the Python documentation as it provides you all the information you need. So instead of writing your own program, try to identify if something is a decimal string or is it a digit string. You should look up in the Python documentation if there is a standard method that can be used. And I will do this in some of the notebooks in the upcoming units as well that are always linked to the Python documentation and show you the corresponding documentation to what I'm showing you in the notebooks. So let's get back to our notebook. Next we have two exercises. The first exercise is a small exercise where you should revisit our example from the previous unit and you should try to change this program and use complex logical expressions. The program as it is here, it uses nesting. So we have nested is statements and now you should try to change the program to see if it's also possible to write this program using complex logical expressions. So I would suggest that you pause right now the video, try to solve this exercise for yourself and I will later on show you one possible solution. So welcome back. So let's try to change this program in something that uses complex logical expressions. I'll copy the first part over because we'll need this in our new program as well. And what I'm now going to do, I'm going to build complex logical expressions that always lead us to the very last part of our nested if statements. So for example, I know if the temperature is larger than 20 degrees, if it rains and if it's windy, I want to print it's warm, it rains and it's windy. And how can I do this? I could use the following complex if statement. If, and I use parentheses to group again, so what do we need to check first? If the temp temperature is larger than 20 degrees, and if it's raining, I make this implicit using, I make this explicit here using the comparison rain equals to true. I could remove the true and just use, uh, use rain, but that would be not so clear in my opinion. Therefore I use the and rain equals true. And then the final part, wind equals true. If this is the case, I want to print the following string. So let's give this a try. Don't try to create the complex program in one go, but try the 
parts of the program out before we before it gets too complex. Let's execute this. So I'll enter a temperature, for example, 30 degrees, and I get it's warm, it rains, and it's windy. So now let's do the second part. Warm, rainy, and no wind. How would we do this? I'll simply copy the complex if statement, and I would now do something like this. If the temperature is again above 20 degrees, if it's rain, and if we if wind is false, then we'll print this one. So and of course we can go on for the part when when it's not rainy as well. So let's copy this over and I'll do the third statement. If the temperature is above 20 degrees, if it's not raining, and if it's windy. So we check here for true, then I want to print this here. It's sailing weather. And now for the final part, the final part is um, warm, dry, and no wind. So down here we have rain is false and wind is false. And in this case, we want to print this st statement. So let's give this a try. We would say it's above 20 degrees. We have no rain and it's windy. So we would expect as a result, the sailing weather. Let's give this a try. And the 30 degrees and warm, dry and windy, good weather for sailing as a result. So as you can see, I can come from a nested if statement where I check several conditions in turn and create one complex condition from it, all right? So the first statement here is temperature is above 20, rain is true, and wind equals true. And that's basically what I've done for all the different statements. So do, let's do the last statement. If temperature is above 20 degrees, rain is false and wind is false. Oh, that's the one down here. And then we get print in this case, the corresponding result. So you see, it's possible to change nested if statements into complex expressions. But what you also see, we start recreating parts of the logical expression. So in each of in every of my statements, I have the check for the temperature, right? And that's exactly what's happening if you have a complex expression. And there is no general rule when you should use a complex expression and when you should use a nested if expression. That's part of experience, what is more readable. So you try, should try to make your programs as explicit as possible. So for example, if I, you know, would have been asked what would be the best way to, to build this program, I would have most likely built something that's a combination, for example, something like this. If temperature is greater than 20 degrees, um, then I'll have a nested if statement down here and I now could remove um, all the all the temperature statements, right, like this. And in my opinion, that would be a lot clearer and we don't have all the repetition of the temperature statement, right? Here, it would now be obvious that you do first check for the temperature and let's try to have this nicely formatted. So we first check for the temperature and then afterwards, depending on the rain and wind condition, we produce different outputs. But again, this largely depends on experience um, and you will get a feeling once you program more and you read more Python code, what is easy to understand and what not. So, so the next exercise is a little bit more complex. You will again need complex logical expressions. What it is about? You should 
create a program that checks if a certain year is a leap year or not. Here, the exercises describes really in detail when a year is a leap year and when not. And you should now try to write a program that checks a given year if it's a leap year or not. So I suggest you stop the video now, try to solve the exercise to yourself, and I'll show you one possible solution later on. So welcome back. I will now show you one possible solution for the exercise too. I already prepared something so that you don't have to watch me typing all this program code. So what I've done here, I basically ask the user for an input. And then I do the check we just learned about in this unit, where I check if year is a digit string. If this is the case, I can convert the year to a number. With this number, I can later on perform some calculations. Otherwise, I tell the user that he didn't enter a year. So now that we have the year as a number, as an integer, we can check, for example, if the year can be divided by four. And if this is the case, I return to the user that the year is a leap year, and otherwise that the year is not a leap year. And again, remember, how do we check if a year or if a number can be divided by another number? We use the modular operator and check if the result equals to zero, as seen here. So that's a first construct. We can try to execute this. If I, for example, enter a test, I get the result, sorry, that this is not a year. If I execute the cell again and now enter, for example, 2016, I get the information that this is a leap year, but uh, I still have little errors in my program. For example, the year 1900 shouldn't be a leap year, but my program still tells me it's a leap year. So let's fix this error. If you read through the text, you will notice that all the years that are dividable by 100 are no leap years. So we can now use this information to change the condition I, get, I have down here in the program. So a year is only a leap year if it can be divided by four, but cannot be divided by 100. So how do we check this? I create a complex condition. So the check dividable by four we have in place. Let's check that year um, cannot divide it by 100. And there are different options doing that. I could, for example, check if the year can be divided by 100 and then put a not here. Um, but I think so this variant is more readable. So the year, the user enters, should be dividable by four and should not be dividable by 100. Oops. So let's give this a try. 2016 is still a leap year. And what is about 1900? It's no leap year. So, our conditions seem to work. But there is still a minor bug. So the year 2000 was a leap year. And of course, our program tells us that it's no leap year. So what's missing? What's missing is the condition. We do this again. What's missing is a condition that every 400 years, again, is a leap year. So we need to change the condition we have in place in our program down here to become true when the year is dividable by 400. So how do we do this? A year that's dividable by 400, it's also dividable by 100. So therefore we can create a complex condition here that um, contains, so I will write first the statement we need, year modulo 400 equals to zero. So what do we need to do? 
we need to make sure that um, this later part here, this part of the statement becomes true, for example, for 2000, for the year 2000. Um, and uh, it's a little bit complex. You might have to play around with the di different operators. It should work if we do it like this. So we group this together. So I'll check if the year is not dividable by 100 or dividable by 400. Um, let's execute this and give it a try. We know that 1900 shouldn't be a leap year. We know that 2016 should be a leap year. And we also know that the year 2000 should be a leap year. Our program seems to work. So you see, there's quite a... So you see, I need to create quite a complex condition here to check this. Um, again, this is just one example how you could solve this program if you used a nested if statement. That's also valid. So you don't need to create a complex statement. You could also use a nested statement, for example. And there are different variants to this program. Um, if your program that you created works for the year 1900, for the year 2000, and for the year 2016, you most likely created a correct program. So don't worry if your program looks differently than the one I created. I just wanted to show you how one can handle complex conditions. So let's jump back to our slides. What have you learned in this unit? You have learned how we can use the AND, the OR, and the NOT operator to create complex conditions, complex logical expressions, and check them in our program. Thanks for watching, and see you in one of the next units.